So today I wanted to talk briefly about the top three things that you can do as a coach to improve the way that you talk to people about the rower. For those of you that don't know, by the way, my name is Shane Farmer, this is Dark Horse Rowing. And what we do is we talk about everything that there is to know about the indoor rowing machine. Pretty much any brand falls under what we talk about. So if you guys are here for the first time, think about subscribing and clicking that little bell right next to the subscribe button. That's gonna make sure to let you know every time we come out with a new video and we come out with one at least every Tuesday for all of you that are interested. So today we are talking about the top three things that you can do as a coach to improve the way that your athletes or your clients or whatever you wanna call them, the top three things you can look at, the way that you, you see the way that they move to help them move better, be more comfortable and help everybody just at the den end of the day get far more out of this machine. So let's just take a, a trot over to the machine. Now, the number one thing that I tend to look for is just a what kind of positions do my athletes put themselves in now by that we need to naturally understand what the right positions look like now there are two main positions and then the other two are simply pass-throughs or they're the transitions to get to those so the first and most important position for you to understand is the catch this is the catch in this position you want hands wide on the handle elbows extended shoulders reaching head and neck relaxed, back flat, hips behind the shoulders, knees tracking underneath my arm, not outside, not caving in. And, I, and for beginners, I want my heels connected to the machine. So what I'm looking at every single stroke is do my athletes get back to this position, this perfect catch? And if you see deviations from this, that would be heels lifting, posture giving way, shoulders behind the hips. If you see any of those positions, that's the number one thing that you can automatically say, all right, we need to slow things down and come back to good positions. So that would be position number one. The second position, what we call the release, it's just called the release because this is where you release the handle. But the things that we wanna make sure to avoid are looking for overextending of the hips or weird positions with the handles, meaning the handle coming up too high. The general target is right at the base of the sternum and the trunk at 11 o'clock. So the rest, the in-between positions would be the drive and the recovery. The drive is from the catch to the release and the recovery is from the release back to the catch. But what I am looking at as a coach, the two positions that I see most frequently are the catch and the release. And then I'm, I'm using those as my basis because if those two positions don't happen, I can guarantee you the positions to get there are also not happening. So that's number one. We're talking about three things. That's number one that I would do to analyze the way somebody is moving. The second thing that I would do is I'm gonna take a look at what this handle is doing. Now, I am generally trying to ensure that this handle maintains as straight a path as possible. What's the fastest way between two points? It's a straight line. I'm trying to see as little up and down movement of the handle as possible. Now, it's very quick and easy to note if somebody's hands are dropping and riding low and then lifting. And I can guarantee you that's gonna be causing issues on both ends of things because if the hands carry low and then lift, the body is going to follow where the hands are going and this is very naturally going to put me into a poor position. So hands low are generally an indicator that something is going wrong. The same goes for hands high and then carry down. So what I'm looking for is straight in, straight out to the body. So that is the number two thing that I'm going to analyze. Now the third thing that I'm looking for is basically can the person move through their hips? And this is as easy as evaluating from a, a standing position. Can the person move their hips without their back having to round? And if I put an athlete into a standing position and I ask them to move their hips and perhaps I even guide them to move their hips, but what ends up happening is this, then I know that we're immediately going to have issues on the machine because during the stroke it's really critical that my athlete be able to rock through the hips because that creates a significant portion of the stroke. So as a coach, the three things that I'm looking at, one more time, just to summarize for you. 
Number one, I am checking the catch and the release positions. If those are going wrong, I know that I have to get back to the movement. Number two is that handle height. Am I keeping a consistent handle height into and away from the body? Because that's gonna tell me if there are any up or downstream issues happening from that. And number three is can my athlete actually move through the hips? Without that, you're not gonna be able to have a very effective stroke. So guys, those are the three things that I would use and that I do use to evaluate athletes immediately when they are on the machine and they're a quick and easy way for you to evaluate if your clients are doing it right as well. From there, you're gonna to start to implement drills and things that you'll find in our other videos. So make sure that you explore our other videos for ways that we can use to repair the stroke for your clients. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Again, make sure that you subscribe, click the little bell so that you can get updates every time we come out with a new video. But we really appreciate you guys being here and we will see you on the other side.